Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Paraline Path. I did this one last week and I want to tell you all about it. Okay, first of all, so you've seen me work on gray before. Normally, as you know, or may, may or you may be new here if you're welcome, welcome. Uh, a lot of times I like working on that, that hardboard color. Like you'll see it just below the gray board there. That's a little scrap prop up my board. Uh, which I would prep with a couple uh, coats of transparent gesso. That's neat. Or I'll work on red sometimes, like uh, burnt sienna. But if you want to do a cool scene, like a monochromatic or something in the blues or something like what we're doing here, uh, that reddish tone or the warm brown tone, it just won't work. So, uh, what I've done in the past is I've, I've mixed, uh, you know, regular white gesso with black gesso and, and, you know, rolled them out on the board and uh, using a little foam roller and uh, would just do that. The, the, the issue I kept running into repeatedly, though, is like I would really work that paint over with my palette knife or the gesso, I mean, it's basically just thick acrylic paint right and I uh, you know it looks consistent then I start rolling it out and I get these these splotches of dark in which I've got to roll 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 to try and get them to fuse in there and there's plenty of paintings you can see where they're still kind of there um, so it's a real pain and I haven't really known what to do about it <clears throat> Other than, say, use very pricey, say, acrylic paint to uh, prep the board. Um, but I did something sort of similar. I um, took a, a page out of my uh, recent book where I was, uh, for these uh, video courses I'm doing, I've had uh, several of them I'm doing on a burnt sienna tone. And uh, to get good, consistent color, I just went and got a house paint, uh, like a little 250 mil samp tester pot. Uh, uh, and rolled that out on my boards and it works amazing and so I thought well I could just do the same thing with the uh, gray and that's what I did I, I grabbed a board I had prepped and just found a, a paint chip card that uh, matched and and got this and then you can see the corresponding color now I'm, it, it looks good it worked great um, by the way, we are working with Paraline Black, which we'll talk about in a minute. I kind of wanted to talk about the board prep because I think it's a really a great idea. First of all, it wasn't super cheap, like New Zealand, say $15, but that's like American 10 bucks or something. But that's a lot of boards you can prep. And if you compare it to the cost of the, say, quote unquote, art supply gessos, it's much cheaper. So... Um, and really good coverage, really uniform, really awesome. Highly recommend that for your board prep. Okay, so uh, we're working with Paraline. Now, Paraline is a very interesting color that a good friend of the, uh, the channel sent me a tube about, well, I guess it was maybe a year ago, maybe a little longer. It's, a, it says, it's from Windsor Newton. It's called Paraline Black but it's really a green that's so when you see me reference it in any of my um well like in these video courses or on the channel or in the, the members area um i always call it black slash green because you add anything to it at all you can see the beautiful green color that it has and very interesting color i i don't not not going to pull it up right now but um basically invented say 1910 20 and used uh for typewriter ribbon okay uh which you know i'm <laughs> old enough to remember typewriters and typewriter ribbons and i do recognize that color it's like a black that's really kind of a green it's a very beautiful color and i have uh, effectively replaced thalo green on my palette with it it's it does all the things that Thalo uh, does, but in a much more natural and beautiful way. So, um, especially since I have Thalo blue on my palette, I really don't need the Thalo green if I have Paraline black slash green. So, and that is sort of the pivot color that I'm riffing off of here. So, what we're doing is essentially a monochromatic painting, uh, but it's taking on a tone uh, that's a bit of a teal. Uh, 
uh, a dark teal, I guess. And uh, I think I'm really proud and happy with the way it came out. Now in the sky, I did add, this was my palette. I got, um, I got Mars Black, Titanium White, and the Mike's Gray, which has been mixed from the Titanium White Zinc mixture, which is, if you look at any, almost any tube of Titanium White out there, you're gonna see it has some zinc in it. That's PW6. Um, I like that in my Mike's Gray mixture because I don't like that too opaque or chalky. Uh, not that I'm a fan of zinc. I don't worry too much about it because I work on hardboard. But if you're working on canvas, you don't want to lay anything with zinc in it and they're real heavy. It has a real tendency to crack. Yeah, just a word to the wise. Uh, I'm not going to go delving into that. But the, um, the perylene is essentially... Uh, uh, what I did was I took some of that white and hit it with the perylene. I have some of the Mike's gray, which I also brought in some raw umber, and that's that tone you see in the sky. It's a little warmer. That was essential. So one of the things I was sort of working against, I feel, was the real coolness of that uh, ground coat. What? Hey, whoa, it's the book. Yeah, hey, we had a couple orders for books go out this week. I'm um, really... Always uh, happy and overjoyed to send that all over the planet and uh, all the states in the United States. And it's sixty dollars um, interna international shipping included, and I'll get it to you. And uh, it's signed and numbered as well. I should point out. And I just placed another order for some more um, books. Uh, we've been, you know, it's it's a slow and steady, and which is great. I mean, I could do all sorts of things with the book to promote it and sell more of them and a lot of those would involve uh, third parties and I just I want to control the quality of it and uh, the, you know well I'd love for it to be everywhere um, until I can line up a, a real publisher if there's any left um, I'm just gonna do this so get the book also the book will be bundled I should point out one of the reasons I place that order is I'm getting ready to rolled out the video courses uh, somewhere around the middle of the month and I'm gonna have bundles with the book where essentially I'm almost paying for the book for you kinda so um, because that's a real physical thing but uh, I, I that's been in my mind for a long time and I might even have a special uh, another special tier that includes a few uh, maybe a small original oil painting as well we'll see Anyway, back to this. So, you know, the way we're working is the way we usually work. We did a drawing and uh, using just straight up perylene. Um, I had some perylene mixed with the white, as I say, uh, two, two different uh, piles of it. And actually, you can see all this in the members area where you get the uh, uh, blow by blow. Actually, I don't think there was a color. Uh, I want to be accurate. I don't think I did. Uh, a color mixing session um, I don't usually for monochromatics because there's only four colors so everything's basically made from those um, but you know if you look uh, if you find this interesting one thing you might find very interesting and it's available to members non-members what have you um, if you go to the channel you go to the playlist section um, there is a playlist for uh, about a year and a half maybe two I did a series where I based um, a painting on each of the colors on my palette with black and white. Uh, I didn't have perylene at that time, so that painting would have been a phthalo, and that's a pretty wild painting, let me tell you. Yeah. So, <clears throat> the other thing I want to uh, mention, talk about a little bit, was uh, the uh, the reference image I used, which you can definitely see in the members area, because that's always flashed up. Um, well, it's not flashed, you got a little time to see it. Uh, and I'm always happy to share the reference image with members if they want to make a, their own sort of a copy of a painting. But this, uh, this reference image uh, was definitely adulterated by me quite a lot. It was based on a very old pictorialist photo. Uh, and I'm always digging around trying to find new pictorialist uh, references. Um, yeah, it's not a lot there because back in the day, you know, it, it's not like now where images are everywhere. Back in the day, you know, it was 
pretty expensive uh, to get into the hobby of photography and um, you would have also needed to pull off a pictorialist photo you might say what is pictorialism what are you talking about well let me tell you it's a movement in photography that was very much influenced by painting and so the uh, the pictorialist photos always have a kind of soft painterly approach generally I love them because they've been very nicely composed uh, so that's that's you know pretty easy for you but it makes makes things easier than say taking any old random photo and, and you know uh, making sure it's a good composition the pictorialists have already sort of in the sense it's almost like doing a study after a master really I, I know I'm sideboarding. Uh, you should know by now. That's what Uncle Mike does. Anyway, it's all good. It all adds up to fun, 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 and the sun, sun, sun. Um, the the photo had like two focal points, and that's one of the risks I was running with this. Uh, where we're gonna where we're we gonna focus? We're gonna focus at the end of that path, or we're gonna focus over. Uh, on the other side where the little field is with the trees in the distance that would almost be the natural place to focus but I did my best to make it I had to make a decision where I'm gonna put the focus and there is a slight tug of war going on but I think it works I think it ended up working well and that is at the path because we uh, as humans are naturally gonna follow a path but so there's that I thought well if I got this path in there and the path in the reference wasn't very distinct I made it quite distinct and uh, almost it made it the subject of the uh, painting actually now in the original uh, the very original reference image which was very low res and, and uh, uh, really blown out and weird in a lot of ways uh, there was a little figure right in front of that field now if we what would we uh, what calls more attention than a path in uh, any image is a human figure if we see a human figure we are automatically going to be attracted to that we can't help it and this is one of the reasons I have done a few little uh, silhouetted figures here and there and I probably will again um, when I do it though it's pretty strategic and I don't like to do it all the time because uh, well this gets it we got a minute why not we could get into this in a minute talk, we're getting into narrative is what we're getting into and I like the narrative uh, in my work to be brought to uh, bear by the viewer by you the person looking at the painting I want you to occupy that space and your consciousness to occupy that space I want you to be there and experience the emotions and feelings that it stimulates in you that you know of course are re you know a response to the feelings that were stimulated in me um, but in a sense once I'm done with the painting I'm out of the picture it is what it is and it's really between you and the picture when you start bringing in figures or barns or any of that, you bring in narrative, you bring in stories, and um, you could make an argument that the path is a bit of a story, but paths are all around us all the time, and we have to get on the path and walk down it. So that's really more about us. That's my rationale. That's my logic, anyway. So um, anyway, there's a bit about that, and I'm. Uh, happy with the sort of gauzy hazy I got a good effect with those trees in the back um, yeah this was not a struggle painting um, it all went real well uh, which is great and I'm real pleased to uh, present it to you today and I hope you enjoyed watching me put it together um, you know if you want to do your own thing a little black a little white a little bit of perylene or you could bring in any color with that combination like I said check out the um, the playlist uh, in my on my channel and uh, you you definitely get a, a, an idea what I'm, I'm on about anyway until I come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment do me a favor and do me a solid take good care of yourself your family all your loved ones stay out of trouble don't worry about what's going on in the world by the way just do your art look after your family try and be happy that's what and do do your job anyway 
until they come back, uh, take your care, stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family. Fight the power. <laughs>